Welcome to the Image Critique Show with Jeff Johnson, Rick Avalos, and their special guest. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. There. Well, it's just a couple <clears throat> minutes after six. We got a, a nice group of people in the audience. So let's go ahead. If you guys are ready to get started, let's get started. So uh, welcome all to the Image Critique Show. We got a nice, um, nice program for you tonight. A nice, uh, a really good friend of ours, who is our uh, guest judge. Rick, we'll talk with him in a moment. Ricky, how are you, my friend? Doing great, Jeffy. How are you? Doing all right. Doing all right. It's, it's been a couple, what, a couple months since we've done this. So <clears throat> yeah. looking forward to uh, pretending like we know what we're doing again for everybody. So, but, but it was so good to share some time at the old timers. Uh, Saturday. that was fun that yeah. was fun just to kind of fill our friends in here uh we have a little bit of a gathering once a year the we call ourselves the old timers that have gone back gosh <clears throat> 34 well uh, as a matter of fact we took a group photograph and uh heather who hosted us wonderful woman hosted us and she says okay before we do this group photograph of all of us she got her pad and she says okay how many years jeff have you, how many years, Lynn, have you, how many years, Rick, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and what did we come up with just shy of 500 years? Experience? Yeah, it was 471 or something. 91, wow. I believe. 91, yeah, of of experience there. Um, I think it hurt everybody to know that number, but still, <laughs> pretty impressive. <laughs> you know, and I guess you could qualify that. Is it really experience or just that we've been doing it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so 491 years of experience, 12 years of knowledge. Yeah, right. <laughs> and a whole lot of beer. So <laughs> too funny. Boy, yeah. So what, any uh, any news, any things we need to share with anybody about upcoming stuff? We got uh, PPA coming up, conference here in January, I think. Yeah, well, I would, I would hope that uh, as many as possible can, uh, if they haven't, register for imaging and uh, get over there. I know that our Colorado contingent is really very, very strong. Uh, would you guess, uh, and Kevin, you were there last year as well, uh, um, that group photograph that we took at that real nice uh, bar and grill, would you say there were at least 40, weren't there? 30 yeah, years? I would say in the 40s. Yeah. In the 40s. Yeah. yeah. And I thought that was a really great contingent from our. It was our good. Team. Good fun. Yeah. I haven't been to the new hotel or the hotel or the convention center where this one is ever before, but I'm sure it's going to be really cool as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're in Louisville this time. So it should be yep. pretty cool. That's a pretty new hotel too. I understand. Yeah. And Jane, yeah. spe speaking of that, I don't know if you heard this, you know, the Gaylord out here by the airport in Denver has been there. What? Five years now. They're already remodeling it. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, uh, wow. Uh, Anyways, so again, thank you, gang, for showing up tonight. We got a, a little over 20 images to talk about. And Ricky, why don't you uh, introduce our friend and guest, and let's get things rolling. And what a pleasure it is to do so. Uh, Gary Meek from Hot Springs, Arkansas, a gentleman, uh, uh, a comic, <laughs> I mean, a seasoned professional photographer, a little bit of a slacker because he only has... <laughs> a little over a thousand PPA merits, uh, but we love him anyway. I, I got to know Gary and his wonderful, beautiful wife, Kathy, several years ago. And, you know, sometimes when we think about several, we think, okay, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years ago. And uh, Gary, um, I'm not sure if you remember, but the first time I met you guys was in uh, Springfield, Missouri. It was a convention of the Ozarks. Uh, affiliate. I had just um, I had just gotten my master's and my connection there, and I'll bet you remember this name, Leonard Lujan. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, he uh, invited me there, but you and Kathy were so gracious uh, when I got there because uh, Leonard said, no, by the way, uh, we're going to want you to judge because I was working on my craftsman. So I was just there to give a program. And he says, and by the way, we're going to want you to judge. And I thought, oh, my gosh. And I was so grateful that they have the drape over the table because my knees were under the <laughs> But I, where I'm going with this is that Gary was uh, 
the print chairman and uh, at the judge's breakfast, he was just so calming to all of us. And I think I must have had a look in my face on my face and and uh, uh, you know you just were so comforting and calming and and uh, mentoring and as I look back because I did look that up and that was Gary in February of 1992. Wow, over wow. 30 years ago, and wow. I mean Gary uh, and I and Kathy have sat on panels many many years. We've uh, shared the stage and programs, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate <clears throat> Gary being here. Uh, you know, I can go on and on about my experience with you, but uh, uh, you and Kathy have, uh, you've had some experiences traveling, haven't you? We have. Uh, we've been very blessed. Uh, I was on the PPA board for six and a half years and Kathy's been on the PPA board and we got to travel internationally. Uh, Kathy thinks that every time we get a chance, we should go on a cruise or do something internationally. Uh, so we just got back a short time ago from uh, Thailand and really, really enjoyed that. And then uh, what's neat is to be on the Great Wall of China and have people come up to you that are Asian and say, hey, can we have our picture made with you? Mm -hmm. uh, realizing the value of photography. But yeah, you know, uh, the travels are great, but like you mentioned the PPA convention. It's for us, it's more of a, a family reunion. And Rick, you, we consider you and, and, uh, our other photographers, uh, family, um, uh, years ago, I, I had a little heart issue. I had five bypasses and people from all over, all over the United States called and said, what can I do to help? What can I do to help? I fell off a tree and broke my right leg. I, well, a flying squirrel ran down my arm as I was getting up in a tree and you let go of the tree when you do that and <laughs> you break your right leg in three places. And I had people call, but a uh, little quick story on that. A uh, uh, young man who's gone now, Barry Rankin called me and he said, uh, uh, I'm going to come down. Oh uh, yeah. It was Barry. He said, I'm going to come down and I'm going to run your business for you. I said, what, what are you talking about? No, it wasn't Barry. It, uh, no, anyway, it, but he said, I'm going to come down and run your business. Said, Why would you do that? He goes, well, when I had my heart attack, he said, I owe it. Cause when I had my heart attack, a young man left his business in Virginia. Now he's in uh, Michigan. So he left his business in Michigan. I mean, in Virginia and drove to Michigan to run his business for him. And that's the way people are. Uh, it's not just the marriage. It's not just, it is the education. It really is. And there's no better education you can get than image competition. Uh, if you, if you don't have competition, there's nothing to make you better. So, right. uh, but it's, it's family and I'm looking forward to Louisville, Kentucky. We've already gone by and looked at the facility and on the way up to Cleveland clinic, which I do that regularly, that sort of stuff. So, uh, it's, it's great. It's great to be here and hopefully we can say something tonight to encourage somebody and, and, uh, leave some, with some fun, but also the main thing is getting the knowledge and the education. Well, we know that that's going to happen, Gary, or uh, you wouldn't have been invited for sure. But uh, tell me a little bit about um, yours and uh, Kathy's business. Uh, you got started uh, some time ago, huh? Uh, and, what, and what type of work do you do? Well, uh, we're in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We only photograph two things, uh, things that move and things that don't. <laughs> uh, that's i mean you're in a small town that's what you've got to do uh but we opened uh we started our business in 77 and uh the deal is we didn't know we didn't know we thought oh we're great photographers and uh i had a gentleman that had been in business for a long time came by my studio and and critiqued my images are on the wall just ripped me apart that helped me more than anything and uh, by the way, the root word for critique is criticize. So tonight, when we're talking about criticism, we're talking about positive reinforcement, positive help. Uh, sometimes I have to say negative things to be positive. But in 77, we opened our full-time studio, mainly doing portraits, weddings, children, uh, like I say, things that move, things that don't, like commercial. Been very, very blessed. Uh, it's hard to go anywhere without bumping into somebody you've made a friend out of. Uh, in, in your town and also throughout the country uh but it's just mom pop brick and mortar studio good 
Well, good. Well, and, uh, Kathy uh, is a master photographer also. And, and yes, uh, she's knocking on that door uh, to the thousand, isn't she? She's not that far away. I, I think a little over a hundred and she'll be to a thousand. Oh, uh, oh. So. Well, we'll have to get her back 50 times this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she would love it. <laughs> And and you actually, and Kathy, of course, you've been to Colorado at our state uh, group and given programs and judged uh, at least a couple times that I can think of, uh, I know. in yeah. particular, because you really slaughtered one of my images. And as I look back, Gary, deserve, deservedly so. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. Uh, some people say, well, the judges, the reason why some people do so good is the judges know their images. One of my dear, dear friends, Ken Helt in uh, Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. Oh, it seems yeah. like every time I go there, if I'm going to rip an image, it's going to be his. And uh, I'm usually wrong. He had one called Twinkle Toes, and I ripped it. And I think he changed a couple of things. I say rip. I, 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 you try to say something positive and then something negative and something positive, as you know. But uh, right. it actually went in the loan collection, which is an image excellence now. Yeah. So I was, I was wrong. Well, and you know what, Gary, uh, I, I made that comment, obviously, tongue in cheek, but this is a good point that I think we need to make to our, our um, guests here, uh, uh, our gallery, is that, um, you know, we're going to make comments that uh, you may or may not agree with, and that's fine. And as a matter of fact, Jeff may make a compliment, a comment that I don't agree with, and same with you, Gary, and me with both of you. So, um, please, it's, you know, don't take it personally. I, we don't know who the images uh, belong to, and it's not something that we're not trying to grind an ax. We're just, uh, these are the points that, that uh, uh, the judges make and based on their experience and, and their observations. <clears throat> it's nothing personal at all. And I've never taken it that way. As a matter of fact, I've never wanted to bring up uh, an image that I, uh, that did poorly to a judge because I was embarrassed. Uh, rather than saying, you know, coming back on the judge and, and knocking them for their poor judgment. But, uh, yeah. Well, I think we all have stories of we've had an image that didn't do well. And if you listen to the judge or his judges about their comments, they're usually right. And if you pay attention, make some of those corrections, it usually does better. I mean, I've done that two or three times. I can remember my early career that saved an image or at least gave me reference for the next time I got an image for competition. So, and again, we're just three people. Um, we have, um, yeah, we have good ideas and experience, but it's not the gospel either. So keep yeah. that in mind. So, and I, I, I so appreciate Gary that your, your reference to this uh, family and fraternity that we belong to, because when you mentioned Ken just two minutes ago, and I'm thinking of Ken and Nelda, man, Mm -hmm. The good times that um, we used to have in Oklahoma, but you just brought some, really, triggered some really great memories for me. They're wonderful people. We found, uh, when we went to Colorado, it was really interesting. We were in Colorado Springs, and uh, at that time, uh, we were doing a day and a half, I think, of, of teaching, and it was our state convention. And at that time, I said, great, uh, this is really neat. Who are the other judge? Uh, who are the other speakers? I said, uh, you're it. <laughs> it's really weird uh i found out snow is which we don't have here um uh, doesn't go from top to bottom it goes from left to right out there in colorado <laughs> <laughs> all right gay well it's about quarter after so we need to get rolling here so we have enough time for our images and our makers so if you guys are anything else you want to throw at the gang or we can go ahead and get rolling here so I'm going to go ahead and steal the screen and pull up some images here so that we can get started. All right, so our first image is called Amblin, Amblin Long. Gary, what are your thoughts on this one? I really enjoy a lot about this image. Uh, for one thing, if you're doing this, you better have a long lens. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when we look at an image, we're going to look at it through the eyes of a judge. And we're taught to look at it through the 12 elements of a merit image. And uh, people that are listening, if you have not done so, and I'm sure you probably have, 
please, please, please go to the PPA website and download the 12th Ellis of Merit image because if you don't know the rules of the game, it's hard to play. I've often said, um, that if people come up to me and say, I think that I said, wait a minute, it don't matter what you think, you're not making the rules. And I don't mean harsh that, but I, I like the image composition. I mean, the composition real well. Um, it's get, you got that major PowerPoint. I don't see my little thing I can draw with, but that's okay. Um, but if, if you look at the thirds, it's in that number three PowerPoint and that makes a strong image. Uh, I like the way that you're cropped in, like say, I'm, I'm sure you use the long lens on this, uh, but you've captured the bear. Uh, there are some things that bother me just somewhat. And that is, I think that we could have taken down the background just a little bit, or you continue to take it the, the tree or the branch on the left-hand side there that uh it doesn't have to be taken out right there but it could be yes but it could be darkened down because remember your eye goes whatever's lightest brightest has most pattern color or movement to it uh, it's where your eye goes so if you can take uh and i'm not here teaching tonight but if you could take the history brush and know how to use it it beats burn and dodge all the pieces and if, if you don't know that you can uh email me or, or text me and i'll send you a, a white paper i wrote on it uh, but it's it's a good strong image is it a merit image uh i think it's close but i think if you take the background down a whole lot and the distractions out it'll be be a lot stronger hey gary also, real quick make sure you go up to the toolbar there and look for the annotate that'll get that'll bring up your uh, pen um oh i see it right here yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Also, also too, gang. He mentioned the twelve elements of design. I've just added that to the chat box. If you don't have it already, so go to open the chat box and the twelve elements or a PDF in there that you can download. These sort of things right here, I'm doing in red. Uh, this yeah. Branch, all this branch. Yeah. If you if you squint, one of the hardest things to do is to judge your own image uh, and see it. So turn it upside down and squint. And then your eye, see where your eye goes. And I think that you'll see what we're talking about. I know I send images off to Rick and I think I've got it pretty well nailed and he'll send me back a laundry list of all kinds of things. So you're right about, we get excited about our own work, but. And, and I mean, vice versa. Yeah. You know, having that other eye, big difference, isn't it? When you have somebody else throw the two cents in there and that flipping it upside down, like Gary mentioned is huge. Ricky, what are your thoughts here on this? You know, I think uh, I think Gary really hit all of the the main points of it. Um, I think that the cropping, as tight as as it is, really creates a a, a tension, um, and I don't mean attention, a tension a t t e m, but to, a bit of tension to the viewer that I think adds to the impact of the image. Yeah, uh, I agree. Um, the other topic that. Um, I mean, it, it definitely clearly is, we know where the focal point is. We know we want to go here. Um, so we definitely, uh, everything is leading us to that. And I definitely agree if the <clears throat> background, it, the back, it's hard because you get in this environment like this and you've got a lot of textures and a lot of colors and it's hard. But yeah, if we can tone down those, definitely the couple upper right corners, I think would bring us into the face a little bit more. I would even maybe look at doing a gradient and, and you know, bringing down the, uh, um, the tone on the side of the bear there just to let this face be a little bit brighter. So can we talk so, a bit about yeah. uh, maybe Gary, you have a light or lighting on this one? Say that again. Uh, can we make a comment or two about light or lighting? Uh, yeah. This... Are you asking or say no, I'm just asking <laughs> Yeah, both, both of you, your comments. Oh, one of the things you might consider on this is uh, if if there's not been anything done to this, uh, the repertoire uh, category, because it is like a, mostly a straight image without uh, the only thing you do is burn and dodge. And you could it, a lot of them use sports, but this nature in that would be good because uh, of that. Now, you can also take and create light ratio with uh, your your uh, history brush, which is a real good thing. In fact, I'll try to go in the chat and post my email address. So I'll be happy to send anybody that, but I think it's um, the light ratio is there. Uh, I mean, not the light ratio, but the lighting is there and you've got pretty good lighting 
as far as underneath the fur and on top of the back, nothing's blown out, but yet it's not a three to one uh, short light either. Uh, it's hard to tell a bear. Would you mind turning your head just a little bit this way? <laughs> you could try. He may not hear you. Right. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Let's move on to our next image in the year. This one is called Autumn Breeze. <clears throat> Gary, what's your thoughts? I'm I'm looking at this, and one of the things that I see is in right now we have a lot of people that are doing painterly stuff but a lot of times it's overdone and i see a lot of painter in here i love the color love the color palette the color harmony uh but these bright uh aspens right. they call them aspens or quakers or whatever they call but yet i think right now for it in today's judging that we're judging right now the painterly may be overworked just a little bit and i think that it's it goes more to like i'm doing the all the painter here but it doesn't really appear as much on the trees it's 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 probably not a different technique but it appears to be also uh i think the mat could have been maybe a little bit uh different i don't know what i do different on it but my eye tries to stay in the image but i keep jumping to the mat also you know, one thing the texture of the mat I, I saw the texture in it and i like the uh i like a texture a little bit sometimes one thing i was going to compliment is right here and that and that third is where your major line is and i think that's to be applauded instead of having that dead center because anytime you have anything dead center then the top and the bottom compete with each other good point so you're suggesting that maybe like the, uh, the the tree density over here, back in here would be more appropriate for in here kind of a thing. So that's your mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in my eyes where I, I circled it the first in red, my eye keeps going to right in here and here, and it, I keep going on here. I keep, I, I don't get to the subject matter. Remember, one of the elements is subject matter. Now, it's a lot of images. Your subject matter is the whole image itself. Uh, and that's what this would be because I don't see like uh, a bird or uh, a, a special subject that I right. can go to, but I think the technical excellence part of this and just maybe a little bit heavy handed on the, on the effects. And I think that's going to hurt in today's world. And a few years ago, it'd been, it'd been a lot stronger. Gotcha. Ricky, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, it, I think an image like this at 60 inches would just grace, uh, uh, an office of any, of any mm -hmm. sort to, as a decor, yeah. um, and uh, agreeing with the points that have been made. As I looked at it, my eye, after the initial uh, viewing went right up to the top here and I'm seeing how it's highlighted across the top. And for me, um, you know, if that would be down, I think that would be very, very helpful. You see, you know, what I'm talking oh, about just just crop that out, probably, or just crop it out. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. And that would that would pull this uh, uh, horizon line that Gary was talking about. It would pull it up a little further. Rick, you but remember uh, Fred Heingartner? Oh yeah, Rick Martin. Oh yeah, Fred Heingartner taught me something. He says, if it's offensive, cut it out. Yeah. If, if it's not what you want the eye to see, cut it out. Because many, many, many times in image competition, less is more. Right. Yeah, that's true. I remember Fred being on po on a uh, platform and he was given a, like, you know, a four hour program. And he, sta he stands there so deadpan and he says, if it's important, light it. If it isn't, don't. Right. And he said, that's my lighting segment. <laughs> and, <laughs> that was it. Hey, and he nailed it. He Not nailed surprised it. either. Yeah. He's he was a funny man. A little strange, a little off center. But... Uh weird. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Let's go to Bison at Sunrise. Gary, go ahead. 
Okay, I really like this. Uh, I compliment the uh, image presentation, uh, uh, just total presentation. Uh, the Bison at Sunrise, I think, is a great title because I see the lighting. However, uh, another compliment is uh, the third, and I'll draw it here. I, I think I got to reset that though. Never mind. Uh, uh, if it's it's in the uh, number two PowerPoint, and I think that's great. Uh, but the thing that bothers me the most is the bison at sunrise is the storytelling, but it's also your subject matter. And the mountains are so bright and so out of focus in the background that my eye does not stay with the, the animal itself. I like the grass, the texture again. I think we could actually cut out uh, a little bit on that bottom because it's light and the eye keeps wanting to try to go down there. But it's it's an awesome image. Uh, but I think that for competition, my eye is going to go to those mountains and stay there and not get back to the bison. Yeah, I kind of I agree. We're kind of almost like a, a voyeur kind of a view because we have this nice <laughs> low um, point of view here. And uh, well, it's supposed to be an arrow. There we go. Um, but I think because of the title being with the bison, I, I would bet even just lightening up the head of the bison, we'd bring that to more attention because it is brightness on the animal itself, brightness back in here on the mountains, and of course the sky. Um, what do you think about if, if this was cropped even closer, um, even maybe even down like this, a long, narrow? I just I like that format. Uh, yeah. Rick, what do you think of doing something like that? Yeah, I agree. And, uh, you know, in addition to what's been said, I, uh, on the positive side for me, there's definite storytelling here, of course, which is one of the uh, one of the 12 elements. And it's in interesting how you can have storytelling in something other than uh, an image that uh, we would otherwise think, well, storytelling, we have to have people in there communicating in some way or another, but there's definitely a story here for me. Mm -hmm. I think as far as the presentation, I would like to see the presentation a little broader. I, I just feel that, um, you know, the mat around it is kind of narrow compared to the massiveness of what we're seeing inside. And I'm not saying a, a tremendous amount, but just a little, a little broader mat, I think would be helpful. Yeah, but half think, again, maybe you're thinking. Yeah, half again. Yeah. And then, but I like the key line. I like the color and I like the, the distance that it is from the image. Very cool. All right, let's see. So let's go on to Brush Creek. Gary, your thoughts? Yeah, it's a beautiful scene. I really enjoy that. I wish I was there. Uh, probably have snow all over it right now. But yeah. uh, remember, uh, if this is a new member, it's a beautiful image and a great uh, shot. However, uh, what was the title? Rush Creek. Rush Creek. I'm looking for the creek. Uh, so you, you can't be subtle with judges. You can't say creek because then they're going to be looking for the creek. Good point. Uh, and that's probably the, the name of the area, Brush Creek area in a, in a uh, national park or whatever. I don't know. But uh, remember, one of your major elements in uh, image competition is presentation. Uh, you see a lot of these with presentation around them. And that's like selling a portrait in the portrait business without selling a frame. And it's there to uh, enhance it and hold it together. So I do like uh, the diagonals. I, I like the road actually, you know, leading you in. And I think that's that's a good thing. I like this diagonal coming right down through here. Uh, that uh, composition, that's good. Uh, but again, this right in here, it could be taken down a little bit so my eye doesn't want to come out. S little things like this right here uh, are really difficult to see initially. But little things like that will make your eye jump. But if you darken this area right in here and all this down in here, kind of a slight vignette, uh, and then you could actually take down the, the mountains. And when you take them down, like with the history brush, it will add sharpness and density to them that you don't have. But it's a beautiful scene, but it would fall a little bit short for competition because of those few things that I, I've mentioned. Rick, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. And uh, 
Uh, I think the image as it stands, uh, gosh, would would make a, a nice decor piece, uh, mm -hmm. cards, it could be calendars, you know, that type of thing, and probably sell a boatload. But I agree as far as the presentation. Also, my concern is the time of day uh, in terms of the lighting and the strength of the lighting, di direction of lighting, et cetera. Uh, you know, we can see that by the shadows that are in the trees, especially in the uh, in the middle area here. Uh, but uh, I just feel that the time of day was just a little off for me. Yeah, that's the thing about the landscape. As beautiful as the scenery is, I mean, we can go anywhere in the backcountry of Colorado, and it's just gorgeous. But talking about competition, talking about the impact that's needed for a good high-scoring image, the time of day is huge. Uh, I know sometimes we don't get there uh, at the time we want to the right light, or sometimes we do get up and make it there and the light, the clouds, the sky doesn't cooperate. Mm -hmm. but those are That's a very important factor in doing competition images. It just has that much more impact and feeling to it. Um, I agree with what you guys have been saying. Um, and yeah, I'd like to have seen if the, if the sky could have been a little bit darker, uh, toned down a little bit. I think that would have pulled our eye because the light clouds and the light blue pulls our eye up there. So if this was a little bit deeper in tone, it would bring us back into the mountains. Um, do like the road, do like the whole story that it's being told here with the flowers. And I don't mind wandering around. My eye wanders around here in the flowers. That's cool. Um, and again, a lot of times we have an image that does not have a focal point per se, but even having said that there's image, there's parts of an image that we don't want people to get lost in. And I'm afraid there's, I wouldn't cut crop the sky away anymore, but if it was just a little bit deeper in tone, a little darker, um, these mountains and flowers would have stood out a little bit more. So, yeah, and you know, That's... Jeff, at some point during our show tonight, you know, it was going to come up, and the rest of our friends here that uh, are uh, uh, watching and usually watch, if there was just a hiker right about here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we can we can do that. <laughs> we can do that. So we have uh, this. Rick and I've had this thirty-year conversation going on, and how um, I go out and photograph backgrounds for his portraits, and, and <laughs> he'll look at one of my landscapes. And I might I may, I might have been out there at four in the morning, and it's exotic. The weather is perfect. The sun, the clouds, the whole works. And he always says, "Yeah, but if there was a person," still. <laughs> and you know what? He's not wrong. So, <laughs> well. Jim, uh, you know, uh, go the, ahead, Gary. Uh, one of the things that, uh, for instance, if I go on a trip uh, uh, wherever I am, I don't always do this, but one of the things you can do is, uh, one, a compass. Number two, a farmer's almanac, because it will tell you where you are, the time of day, the uh, uh, declination of the light, when it's going to be sun, sun uh, rise, sunset, and so you can plan your trip. If you go by an overlook and you go, that is gorgeous, but I don't, I want to know when, what direction I am, where's the sun going to be, right. where's my light coming from? Uh, one of the things I've, I've coined and uh, the only thing I've ever said, uh, I think original in my whole life that I uh, would like to be noted for is that we create or paint with light, but it's m as much or more important to sculpt with shadows. True. Whether it's a person or a landscape or whatever. And I think that's what you brought up about the time of day. Uh, it's not sculpted with shadows uh, because, I mean, the clouds are making shadows, but because the time of day, it, it flattens out the mountains. Yeah, really good point, Gary. Thanks for bringing that up because as beautiful, and this is the hard part about, gosh, in all my travels, we come to some absolutely breathtaking, jaw-dropping scenery, and even in the, at high noon. But when you see it at that lower light level or early morning or whatever, it's it's so much more incredible and beautiful. But just allowing the shadows to build up in the, the valleys of the hill, let this be a little darker, letting this go a little darker, letting this go, just stuff like that. It creates that three dimension that we're trying to, since we're, we're dealing with a two dimensional media, we want to make sure we create that third dimension. And that's where the light comes in. So well yeah. said, sir. All right, next one we have. Let's see, I got to hang down, change tool there. I'll figure this uh, software out real quick here. Boy crazy, boy crazy. I'm not sure how to say that word right. Boy, those things. 
<laughs> Gary, your thoughts? Yeah, I, this brought back a lot of memories. I'd like to take credit for one real similar to it, but Kathy did it and she won't let me in her files. Uh, <laughs> and it was really an awesome shot. Uh, great, great storytelling. Uh, Bowie Crazy. Um, I think it's a great, unique title. Uh, one of the things that we work for is impact. And one of the things that creates impact is emotion. And if you can create an emotion with a title or uh, uh, whether it makes them happy, sad, laugh, cry, whatever, I, I always like photographing people because when they cry, they buy. Uh, so it <laughs> kind of makes us uh, make sense. Uh, beautiful shot. Like Rick would say, this would make a great postcard or something. The I think the image presentation needs to be totally different but i got an idea the one that kathy did that was so similar one thing had a great great light direction on it but it was more like uh well where my where's my pen there's my pen okay uh red yeah let's see if it's she did something like this right here okay just just a segment of the buoys uh just a segment because really your eye is going to go here, it's going to go here, and it's part of your storytelling, but uh, see how your eyes can go this open sign? It's, it's beautiful. Again, maybe cut it off right here, uh, and maybe cut it off right up in here this way, and just have all the buoys there, because uh, your eye is going to jump to those stripes at the bottom and, and the checkered uh, plaid or whatever it is at the top, so I think that that would help a whole lot and uh, darken the, the matting down quite a bit, but it's a great, great vacation snapshot or, or image. Of, and hey, we've got one on the wall that Kathy uh, did at the, uh, the Grand Canal of Venice. That's, a, I think, a 42, 50-inch image that enhances our home. So when I'm saying a vacation snapshot, I'm being, um, yeah, what you like that crop. That. Yeah, crop like, like that. Look how much stronger of an image that would be. I don't know if you agree or not, but uh, think about that uh, as far as presentation and putting it in there. And again, I, I, I tried to put my email address in the chat. I didn't I didn't know how to do it. Uh, but if, if anybody wants to know how to use that history brush, I could go in there and put light direction on all those buoys if it's the only time you can photograph. But like uh, was already said, the time of day and the light direction makes a lot of difference. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a, there's an awful lot of fun that could be had with this this image here. And um, well, let's see, I'm trying to bring back my uh, oh, history's not working for me here. Um, yeah, so I think there's definitely a uh, opportunity here to bring back um, mm -hmm. this uh, um, whole theme. Um, I'm just going to go up here to uh, I think I think it's a, I think there's a strong image within the the whole thing that we were presented. Well, you know, Gary, uh, you make such a an interesting and really a thoughtful and a great point, um, reinforcing what I learned from Jeff with his scenic work and and what he teaches is you oh, know yeah. to before you even think about photographing, just stand back, enjoy the scene. And just, if you will, kind of be part of the scene and then look at a scene that's in the scene. And I think that's kind of what you're yeah. alluding right. to. Yeah. And, and I, I've actually used that in portrait work where, you know, you're photographing a three quarter view. But gosh, look at the eyes of this gentleman or this woman. Let's get into that scene or into yeah. the hands of that person. So, uh, uh, really a great point but i would i would really agree with the with the um presentation you know the color i think is just a little uh overboard and a little bit uh, too commanding of attention you know you talked about people and uh cutting things out and uh, emphasizing certain things and uh there's an old saying that says i've never seen an ugly bride we're from arkansas we've seen some ugly brides <laughs> <laughs> oh my so, god <laughs> so sometimes just the hands on the bouquet is really the best shot you can get <laughs> okay remember we're recording this scary <laughs> oh, okay i said in arkansas not colorado 
That's true. That's good. No, that's and I know what you're talking about too. So that's too funny. Well, they're usually cousins anyway. So it's yeah, okay. that's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, let's see what else we got here, gang. Well, I don't know about the rest of our friends out there, but I'm having a ball. That's right. Well, that's why we do this. We just, you know, just to be selfish, Rick and I only do this show because we we enjoy doing it. So yeah, right. So this is. I get rid of the tool here. You know, it's funny how Photoshop can work well for me, but until I have a sh an audience. Uh... <laughs> okay, so this is called By the Dawn's Early Light. There we go. Gary, what do you think? Awesome image. Uh, I think it's uh, done really at a good time of day. I love the presentation. I love the format. It has a great impact to me. Uh, you know, impact for y'all, snow is not impactful for you because you go like, oh, shoot. But for us, <laughs> it would be. Mountains are very, very impactful to me because we don't have uh, a scenes like this where I'm from. So uh, I'm looking at the 12 elements, impact, creativity, style, composition, uh, presentation, center of interest, lighting, subject matter, color balance. Here it'd be tonal harmony or tonal balance. Right. Um, technical excellence technique and storytelling. And I see a lot of those things going. Let me think about how, if I can find anything that I would correct or, or say, look for little things like in the corners, especially light traps. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I agree with that one. Yeah. And I think your sky is, is, is okay. Uh, you might pop just a hair of contrast in there, but um, little things like, uh, little white spots like that, anything that's going to draw your eye, take them out. Okay. Cause the judges don't know they were there in the first place and it didn't matter. Those things do not enhance this image. Uh, but little things like that right there, just, Hey, be the most picky person you can be when you're entering an image. Uh, one of the, uh, best advices that I ever got, a guy named Dave Swoboda, who was a master that's at cool. entering 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 he was a, a master he was a master printer as well oh yeah an, an awesome goofy's a bessie bug but uh, <laughs> he, was, he was great and he he gave me some of the best advice i ever got i like to pass it on never ever ever fall in love with an image until after it gets a seal on it or until after it scores an 80 or it's it's accepted into competition boy isn't that true until then you be your own worst critic i'm wondering about if this is a road right here i don't know uh but anyway be your own worst critic and go there and way you can do this is zoom in and take one square at a time all the way across the top and all the way around and if it's the least bit offensive do like uh fred harngarter said cut it out cut it out. <clears throat> yeah this is a hard uh hard sell because first of all it's an amazing black and white the tonal range is outstanding all the way through the whole scene. Um, and you're right, the little things that you pointed out, you would think that, okay, well, that's part of the scene, but for competition like this, if it draws the judge's eye to it unnecessarily, yeah, I would, I get rid of those kind of things too. I mean, you have to, you have to know when to draw the line, like you talked about over here a little bit, but you can, oh, that whole ring, I mean, where do you stop? So at right. some point you have to just kind of look at it, but like these individual areas that Gary pointed out definitely are something to consider taking it out. I think the thing that, that I saw most was the corner. And I look at the sky and I would maybe even like to see the sky darker just yeah. to bring it in. So, and, and you know, here's and there's another hard thing that I've had with competitions over the years when you get this beautiful landscape and then you have a sky with clouds in it, there's a lot of texture in the scene. And sometimes that sky can take over. Um, I would, um, I mean, I'm not saying suggesting change it, but you can easily enough a solid gray sky, maybe a gradation from top to, to the mountains. That was supposed to be an arrow. Um, <clears throat> you know, darker at the top and the lighter here could really be strong for this image because then the the rock formations here, this is called the Garden of the Gods, um, <clears throat> would just absolutely really stand out because we are competing with the light tones here and the rocks and the sky. Um, but yeah, it comes down to your, your changing the image a lot and depending on what category you're putting it in, but, you know, for something like just hanging it in a gallery, hanging it in a store to sell, um, 
all these things that we've been talking about are not our kind of moot point, but what a beautiful uh, panoramic uh, of the whole scene. Ricky, what's your thoughts? Well, you guys nailed every point. To... Okay, next. Okay. The only thing I... <laughs> this is uh, reminds me so much of, uh, remember when Fuji came out with that six by 17? Yeah. Uh -huh. you, got, what, you got four four frames on one roll. <laughs> right. right. It was worth it too. And now we can stitch them together, do photo merge, and just do some fantastic things. Uh, in some of my travels, uh, we went to South Pacific, and one of my most memorable images was a, a scene uh, of the ocean, and the waves were coming in, and I used the photo merge and did not even break a wave. Yeah. It's, wow. it's, it's so awesome what you can do now. And I, I do like the sky. I think it adds... Uh, to me, it enhances. I do agree with taking it down somewhat. Uh, I was wondering if that was the Garden of Gods. We spoke there one time, real close there, with the uh, the ICP group. Right. Well, that's just it in the sky. Because I mean, I do like the sky. Not to say it should be changed, but it's one of those. It's it's one of those conversations that we hear a lot with <laughs> judges. It's like the mat. If the mat's white. Because it's kind of fine art, then we get a judge say, "Oh, I think a dark mat would be good." Then you put a dark mat. <laughs> the next, you know, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Then the next panel, the judge says, "Well, I think a dark mat's too much." So, okay, whatever. So, well, well, so they, 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 uh, they split the difference and gave us a little bit uh, darker than 18 yeah. percent gray, yeah. which I think is great for this particular image. Excellent. Uh, yeah. It's not overstroke. You know, uh, a few years ago, uh, these exotic mats. I mean, you put exotic Mac on a real crappy image and it would just fly off the chart anymore. It's like, well, it's overworked. Yeah. So it, we go through cycles and it does change. Uh, so you got to keep up with, with what's going on right now. Well, judges aren't stupid. They may be dumb sometimes, but they aren't stupid. So, okay. I'll get myself out of trouble here. Let me just get this <laughs> guy down and go to the next image. We have now, this one's called coming home. Hmm. nice gary what do you think simple it's simple uh it's plain uh, it looks like a piece of fine art to me it's like something you would go to uh, albuquerque to some of their fine art um uh, galleries and see on the wall uh, i'd tell you one thing i would consider on this i love first of all let me say i really enjoy the presentation i think this inner stroke right here maybe a little bit too wide i don't it didn't really need to be that wide it needs to be more like this right here because it just draws my attention a little bit okay i love the diagonals um if you cropped it a little bit then you could put this more in the third and that's that in the third but the thing i thought of immediately on this is flip it because your window is on the left side and we read from left to right so if you have your subject over here, it's a lot stronger image. And to me, that I see that as the, uh, the, the image. Now, I'm not sure about the title. The storytelling hasn't hit me yet. Uh, I like the light gradient, but it may be a little bit too much, uh, too much lighter here than down here. But I, th I think it's a beautiful piece of fine art. Whether the judges would accept it like that, I don't know. One thing, uh, and I want your opinion on this, guys. Uh, should these cracks in the sidewalk be taken out? You know, it's funny you meant, you say that because I was just looking at, um, I'm just going to do this. These two guys catch my eye. Good, bad, uh -huh. or I don't mind this one. Right. But these two kind of, uh, you know, minor point. Um, but they are pulling attention maybe unnecessarily. And uh, since we can do this, Ricky, go ahead and talk if you want. Well, I'm going to just play with. Yeah, I certainly will. You know, to me, there is so much impact here. Uh, so I the wrong way. <laughs> Too fast <laughs> on the mouse. Yeah, you flipped it good that way. Now, it's not the way you've viewed it, so you'd have to get used to it. And I saw an image within an image right here, too. I saw this right here, and I'm not drawing it just exactly right. But something similar to this right here uh, is another image within that image also. Just the light? Cool. Just Yeah, if you put the light, a long narrow, put the light in a, 
and a third and have that crack leading you to it. I didn't draw it near what I should, but uh, I think there's an image within that image. Interesting. Ricky, anything you want to add? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> absolutely. When this uh, image first came up, to me, it fired on several elements, several levels. I mean, there's impact to it. Uh, I do see storytelling here. You know, we were talking about uh, the cracks on the uh, uh, on the walkway. I wouldn't I wouldn't do anything with that. Maybe toning down these little ones, but uh, I I I wouldn't take them out because they're leading lines to me. Uh, they go into the yeah. image, and quite quite frankly, guys, man, if I had a, a scoring uh, box. <laughs> that's an old term isn't it um, <laughs> you want to explain that one i don't think anybody else would know that I, one. <laughs> I i think i'd i'd be at 90 and, you know, <clears throat> yeah and you know it's funny i'm sitting here looking at the thumbnail of the before the flip and i'm kind of liking the original version better that's you know? just a matter of opinion but yeah uh, i always try flipping and see if i like it but sure. our, it kind of gets burned into our retina the way we saw it the first time. But I, I agree. I, true. It, it's not broke. It's not broke before you flip. And, you know, um, Gary, you make a good point about opinion because we probably all remember Frank Christian. Yeah. And he says, well, you know, everyone is entitled to their own ridiculous opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do agree that we do have, um, these nice lines coming into the window, the window kind yeah. of in the point of focus. Um, but hey, like you say, to each his own, right? Yeah, and there's just a good tonal range through the whole image. Oh, yeah. The the range yeah. is, is just absolutely extraordinary throughout. It's, it's very, what I like about the tonal range, and you get that nailed, is that, I mean, look at the roundness uh -huh. in, in the front of the staircase here. I mean, it's, that actually looks round and not just a flat area with a, gradient in it. it actually looks and there's depth this window is back um behind this and it sure feels that way so does uh, the fence bother you um you know when it first came up i saw it but it's subtle enough that i think it's just giving us a little bit of a line that kind of comes in mm -hmm. um to the window and then the stairway so well and you know you know, again it doesn't really bother me as well but then you know there are things that we can do with all these tools that uh, like Gary, you were alluding to with the history brush and this and that. And number one, just because we can, does that mean we should? Um, and then another point that I like to make sometimes is how far do we go with an image and editing yeah. to the point that we sterilize it? You're exactly right. Yeah, that's true. Just because we, there's all these new tools and all these great things you can do doesn't mean we should do that to our image. I think it takes us away from being, creative photographers and creating the image out in the environment and then just enhancing it as opposed to snapping something on the curb and then taking it into Photoshop. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong on that. But you know, what direction do you really want to go with your work? Do you want to create something out of pieces that you, you gathered in the street or do you want to actually be, I think more of a photographer and just polish it off in the software. So this just reminds me so much of like, that era of uh was it Stieglitz and these guys uh mm -hmm. 20s and 30s I, I think it's gorgeous well i'll tell you the maker is going to love that you said that so good job all right good stuff i like that we get images that we and as far as the makers it goes if you're tuned in on this one if you're hearing us please know that we're just having fun and just throwing some different ideas around one's not better than the other it just is all right so this was called Dog versus hyena. Gary, what do you think? I'm looking uh, again. It's I think it's a very interesting shot. It's a good nature shot. Uh, you're talking more about an alpha male uh, fighting for his territory, and I don't see the dog. I'm looking for the dog, and I see the the hyenas, but I don't see the dog. So that. Uh, I'm I'm one of the world's worst at titling something. I mean, I really am. Um, applaud the time of day that was taken. I think it's a great nature shot. Um, you know, we talked about the mat. 
the mat doesn't bother me on this one at all because I see it as a, a fine art type mat. Uh, some judges would say maybe it needs to be a little grayer than than white, and I, I don't I don't have a problem one way or the other. Uh, negatively, uh, again, that's what we're supposed to be doing is talking about because if all we say is great stuff that doesn't help you any at all. Uh, uh, this back in here, uh, darken all this right here. So that your eye goes to the bullseye composition, which is right here. Right. I think all the other things, all the other animals and everything else are supporting that bullseye composition. So you don't want to take down the light direction too much, but uh, that's that's my major concerns is is don't let your eye go out. Your eye goes to this trap right over here, so uh, you can take that out. I don't know. You might try cropping right along in here. I don't know. You don't wouldn't want to leave a hole and maybe a little bit further to the left. But I think that's a a nice shot. That's a good action shot. Uh, compositionally, uh, it's bullseye. We we'll always talk about rules of third, but let's don't forget bullseye composition also. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the dogs are the ones with the patches. The hyena yes. is has got the spots. Right. It, the, okay. The hyena is right in the middle, and the yes. dogs. There's there's four of them. There's one here, one here, one here, and then the other one coming out from the tree, and they're attacking the hyena. They're wild dogs in Africa. Okay. That, bring, that brings up the point about don't confuse the judges because you got to know which are the dogs and which is the hyena. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, you know, goes to, you were talking about titles in that earlier and dog versus hyena is, is you know, kind of, <clears throat> you know, we can make it a title fight kind of a feeling, you know, um, Ollie versus Frazier kind of a thing. And so it does have a good connotation, but it also kind of just because of the little stumbling areas, I mean, these, dogs are not a color that we're used to so which is the hyena which is the well okay well, you know when you're educated you can see the different face structure and the different ears and such but um it is a very uh involved shot so it does take a moment to decipher let me remove it's even more involved when there's lines all over it um so it is kind of difficult to see it but it's a great repetage great story um right and I think, like you said, a few couple of things, toning this down a little bit would certainly keep our eye in, toning this corner down would keep our eye into this action here. And I don't mind that this guy is right in the center. I mean, this is the focal point. I might have lightened that face up all along in here, just lighten that up a little bit, lighten up the mouth so that it really stands out more um, so the viewer can see that a little bit clearer. Um, Ricky, what do you think? Um, no, you guys have hit it. Uh maybe i don't know maybe cropping from the top just a little bit to add a little more intensity or tension to the image because we've got kind of tighten it up of, you mean yeah we've got a lot of space up here and i i like to think well, is it when i'm working on an image is this element adding to it or is it right. taking away is it even is it supporting it and if not let's well we'll do a, a fred heingardner just cut it out Right. What's now, one, one of the things you said I 100% uh, agree with, I think this would do a lot, lot stronger in repertoire uh, than in a like an illustrative category. Uh, but there are people that, that, that I think that's a strong crop right there. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a stronger, a lot stronger image because you've taken all that top, you've taken the problem areas out. Uh, yeah, well, it's chaotic scene. So let's make it even more chaotic. Let's make it even more intense by right. Really zooming into those eyes but see, okay, judges, guys. judges don't know the difference between a hyena and a dog maybe no so, I, th I think if you title it fight for survival that takes that out of the equation that great title yeah. that's a good point because there's a lot of times that we're trying to tell a story and we know more about the image than a, a, anybody else a viewer a judge whatever and sometimes the words that we use might be accurate but does the average Joe know the difference? And again, like just because we stumble over it, because, you know, these aren't dogs that we're used to this kind of coloration. So we had to stop for a minute and think about it. So love that title. Fight for survival. Yeah. I copyrighted it now. So, you know, you can't use it. Oh, man. I hate well, that. Well, share it with the maker. I think she'd watch it. So <laughs> well, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah. It's, it is an absolutely gorgeous capture. I mean, just to be there um at that moment and have that hopefully not standing right there 
Mm. Uh, so this is called Fortress of Faith. Gary, thoughts? Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at the zone system. And if you're not familiar with the zone system, please study it. And it looks like almost like a black and white that you used a yellow filter on to darken the sky down, yeah. which would uh, brings back Ansel Adams and, and his theories. Uh, I got two things to say, and they're going to maybe be opposite of each other. One, I kind of like the uh, steeple and earth being off center just a little bit, but I'm wondering if we would try it maybe more symmetrical to have this area and this area uh, bring them out here. Uh, so it'd be right in the middle because the fortress, the faith has a lot, a strong, strong foundation that would put this in the middle of the, the image and not in the third. So I, I'd try it that way just to see, but uh, man, th this image is not broken. The, the presentation is not broken. Um, I like the texture and the presentation. I think it enhances the whole thing. Uh, the stroke line might be a little bit bright. I think you could bring the, the tonality of that stroke line down just a little bit, and you'd have a, 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 a really strong Ansel Adams type image. Yeah, I agree totally. It's got a beautiful tonal range throughout. The only thing that kind of I would love to maybe see a little bit more detail in that very dark area or even just a little bit lighter because it's kind of the, almost being that black hole that pulls <clears throat> in, but it does work because that's kind of the, the bell there is kind of the focal point. Mm -hmm. If you will. we've got the roof that brings us up to it, even the steeple, even though it's pointing up, it, it lets us keep within this triangle here. <laughs> um, but and I kind of, I agree when you, when you say that, if you can, um, adding that if it's possible if it's there adding that other corner of the roof would make this very symmetrical but very powerful very powerful and here's yeah. where i look at again this just comes to my own work i look at the clouds and the first thing i would like to have rather have seen is a solid sky with no clouds in it because that <laughs> definitely would have made that uh <clears throat> so. any other thoughts yeah um and we've talked about this on previous shows as far as the key line. And, um, you know, it outlines the image so well, uh, top uh, left to, uh, to the right and down. But then that key line, because of its value, its uh, tonal value, we lose it in some spa uh, parts of the, of the clouds. Um, so either detaching or you know uh i actually probably detaching it would be better detach it make me uh, make it a little bit thinner maybe half the width of the goal yeah or just something so that it doesn't blend in with the clouds right you know you see what i'm saying yeah mm -hmm. yeah it does kind of i mean we know look on the on the right side how right prominent it is and how what a good job it does outlining the image but then we lose it on the left side yeah yep good point Great title, too. All right. So next we have, and I'm not, I'm going to mess up the title of this one. G is four, and I think that's probably all it's supposed to be. But again, this kind of goes back to, <clears throat> don't make the judges think too hard. Right. <laughs> I mean, we can kind of guess G is for giraffe, G is for golly, G is for good. I don't know. Um, but Gary, what do you think? I think it's an awesome image. I think, it's, uh, I think it's a very popular type image right now, and that's good and bad. Uh, when you have something that's too popular, then it loses its impact. True. Uh, I think it's a, a strong image. I like the, the way the background's been handled. Uh, I don't even mind this really uh, bright spot right here. And by the way, my red and the orange are going to clash. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm seeing some texture right up here in this area that I'm not real sure about. Uh, I don't know if it's been textured or whether it's a, an anomaly that that uh, may have been uh, some sort of concern. I'm also seeing on my screen anyway, I'm seeing some stripes right in here. But I think it's a cute image. Uh, I think that it could have been maybe cropped in from the top a little bit. And uh, brought the eyes maybe up more in the third instead. Of, they're not in the center, but uh, it might have been 
better to crop about a half inch off that top. Yeah, right there. That may make, make a stronger image. I don't know. Again, uh, there usually are five judges. And for a judge has to be five points higher than the average for it to raise the image one point. Right. So uh, it's going to hit somebody's hot button and somebody's going to say, yeah, I've seen that before. Rick, think. Totally agree with the crop as far as coming down from uh, from the top. Um, I think the color palette of this image is is extremely well done. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the technique on the uh, on the giraffe is is handled well. Uh, maybe just a little bit more uh, detail, you know, in the highlights and the ears. But uh, but uh, yeah, Gary, you're right. I mean, you hate to say, you know, I've seen it before, and we would be banished as a judge if we yeah. seen if you say something like that. oh we would but, never say that no well no of course not. <clears throat> but you'd but, think uh, it <laughs> but you're right it's still there it's still there right <laughs> but but yeah um uh you know certain disciplines when they're repeated so many times i couldn't agree with you more the the um the impact just isn't there um so guys what do you think about we've talked a few things let's talk about the mat again we have quite a distance um from here to there is that okay is that what do you think for me the, the mat doesn't bother me as far as the width of the mat okay. um, because it's it's toned down so much right you know the brightness of the of the subject and the background i'm drawn right into it so i i really don't have a big concern about that gary oh, uh it, it didn't jump out to me uh, it's not so in your face that it bothers me all that much. It's right. got, you know, a pretty wide, uh, underlay, if you want to call it that. And, uh, if it's got a stroke, it's a, uh, I think it has a subtle, subtle stroke. So it didn't bother me. And to the maker, it's an awesome image. And, uh, if it'd been the first one out of the box, I mean, it would have scored off the charts. Uh, but the more th something is used, the less, uh, that, it has has the impact <clears throat> totally agree with the color palette i think everything is is really there uh check those technical excellence things about that texture in the background it may not be there it may just be my screen although i've got a really really good screen but those are my only concerns about it i think it's a very nice image well that's the thing that, that at least i've been seeing you guys judge quite a bit as well <clears throat> and i was doing a, a group out of california last week and I don't know what it was, uh, one of the judges, and I'm assuming his monitor was calibrated well, too, but he kept seeing aberrations and other lines mm -hmm. and things that the rest of us didn't see. So that's one thing that does play into the digital world that there might be stuff, and especially if your file, for some reason, is on the edge of, of I don't know what the right word is here, but quality, um, you're going to start pulling. Because I, I do see the lines like you were talking about, but I don't see this up here. So I think a lot of that has to do with different monitors and so on and so forth. So that brings up a point I'd like to mention. Yeah. <clears throat> if you're entering photographic competition and you don't have your monitor profiled, then you're shooting in the dark. Uh, make sure you get a, a good uh, color calibration. I use an I one. I don't know what y'all use, but uh, if I need to be able to see what you see, you need to be able to see what I see. And yeah. when we, when we judge, we go in before ever judging and we profile our, our monitors, uh, when we're judging internationally, which, uh, some of us do, then we are uh, required to have a, uh, you can't judge on a laptop. You can't judge on, on a small screen. It needs to be a, a larger screen with, with a certain resolution. So, um, profile your monitors. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, we're halfway done here, so let's see what we have next. We have in sickness and in health. Gary, your thoughts? Yeah, uh, I think it's uh, very emotional. I think it has uh, a lot of impact to it uh, because it's telling a story. Uh, the thing that uh, the, the relationship is there in sickness and in health, and I think probably she is the one that maybe is a, the one that's sick and he's consoling her. I'm not sure, but, uh, it's a great storytelling type image. 
on the uh, not so positive, the arm down here has been burned in, and I'm seeing a color aberration coming in into that arm. I'm seeing uh, uh, some greens and some cyans and some magentas in that arm because it's been burned with the, probably a burn tool, and it, it does that. I'm seeing uh, some anomaly right here of, of concern to me uh, with a gradation between highlight and shadows. The thing that stuck out with me, uh, first of all, I'm going to be ignorant here just a second, is <laughs> the smile. Now you can erase that. But uh, I'm not in sickness and health. I'm not sure why the smile is there unless she's uh, lighting. I think you've got a good lighting pattern, good light direction. Uh, your tonalities are, are really good. The mat to me could have been a little bit darker, uh, so my eye doesn't jump to it. But those are the positives and negatives that I see in that. Let me ask you guys real quick: What do you think of the catch lights in her eye? Well, I'll, that I was <laughs> wanting to address that. Okay, you go uh, ahead. Um, <laughs> but let me start out with some positive things about this image. There's definitely a great concept that the that the maker started out with. Uh, I, I appreciate the story. We've got a really nice um diagonal you know from i'm trying to draw a straight line here but anyway uh from the gentleman's uh, head to her head so you know we've got some really nice things going on here mm -hmm. i just felt that the light was a little bit low because when i see the catch lights in her eyes they're at uh, uh what about nine o'clock um i would and we can see that in the shadow too as well uh to the side of her nose Another thing that uh, Gary kind of touched on as far as the expression, uh, man, I think this would be so powerful if rather than our uh, young lady looking at the camera, if she would just let her eyes kind of drift down a little bit. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I agree with that a lot. I think that would, uh, but uh, yeah, and in the bottom left corner with the, uh, uh, burning in or toning down but, uh, but man uh, you know there's potential in the concept i'm not sure if there's potential in the execution of this particular image so i and i hope i'm not being too harsh i just want to make sure that uh, our maker uh, you know gets the message because where you started and where you are and where you're going with this image it's obvious you have a great passion for what you're doing this would be one of those that would be great to go back and reshoot with these uh, these exactly. concepts and ideas. Yeah. And uh, I think the catch lights are real more like uh, 847 instead of 9 o'clock. But <laughs> other than that, it's okay. Uh, also, I'm seeing some coloration right up in here. On my screen, I'm seeing some green and, yes. and color. Yeah. When, when you're doing a, an image like this, if it happens to go that way, be sure and change it back to total black and white. Uh, that way you won't have those colors coming in and being introduced into the image. But well, what a great concept. Uh, maybe have him in a, a black uh, a, the, the long sleeve t-shirt instead of short sleeve. That would alleviate that problem with the arm. Yep, good stuff, you guys. I really like it. I think that in summary, I think if she was looking <clears throat> down a little more pensive, um, I would think if he was looking up just a little bit because we have an awful lot of forehead in the scene, we see a little bit more of his face. Even I'd even remove the glasses, um, work this ear tone down. I mean, we're you know we talk about these little tiny things, and and of course the first thing that comes to mind is we're being picky. But you know when you start looking at a when we were doing scoring for years, or we do at the state level, every little thing like that is a point or two. And if you you know when a when an image is really good, judges are looking for something to talk about. And if it's little stuff like that, so to the maker, I would definitely take this concept and try some of those suggestions and, and reshoot it. I think you'll have something to be even even more better. I got it in. Okay, let's move on. Here. And the square crop, I think, is just great. Yeah. yeah. Jeff, uh, one thing, uh, constructive, we're trying to do constructive criticism. And if all we say is really nice things, it, it doesn't help. We're not ever talking about the image maker. We're not ever talking about the subject. We're talking, addressing the image itself, never putting somebody down, but trying to use constructive criticism to build somebody up. Right. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and if I may, the, the maker sent me a nice little text about the image that it was actually a client. <clears throat> um, the gentleman was on the floor because he pretty much had these kind of limitations. So 
you know, we're talking like we probably have a couple of actors here and what, what they've done is, is a tremendous capture for the situation. So, you know, congratulations to the photographer for, for getting this. Cause there is definitely mood here. There's definitely feeling, yes. there's definitely the sense of wanting to reach out and hug both of them and, and how can we help kind of thing. So, um, so there we go. All right. Moving right along, we have lobster boats. I'd like to bring this up a little bit here. Gary, what do you see? I see a nice image. Uh, yeah. I see some images like I've seen in Maine, or I don't, I don't have a clue. I, I doubt that's Colorado. Um, could be. <laughs> it could be. Pueblo. Could be. Yeah, <laughs> they have got to have water first. Uh, but I think it's a great scenic. Uh, the only thing I would like to see maybe a little bit different is uh, maybe uh, saturate it just a hair to get more, a little bit more pop in that background. Again, subject matter. Um, the whole scene there is the subject matter. Uh, I don't mind the mat being wide like that for this particular shot. Uh, it could be narrowed down uh, considerably and maybe make it stronger. Thing about it is, try it different ways. Try it so many different ways. I like the church in the background, just sticking up above everything. I think it tells a lot about the community. Um, uh, lobster boats, that's exactly what they are. So, um, well, it's scoring 80. I don't have a clue. Uh, little, not concerned, but curious about the sky i uh, don't know if the sky was dropped in i'm almost going to say it might have been because of either that or it's very cloudy because of this area right here where the sky appears to come over the scene in several different places uh you can put your if you drop a sky in change it to multiply mode and you won't get that because it is a transparent mode well, I'm kind of guessing that there's a lot of heavy atmosphere here. This probably so. Very overcast day, so there probably is a thickness of clouds, almost a foggy kind of feeling at the top of the trees, because it does kind of carry through mm -hmm. the the top area of the um, of the image, you know, like all the way through yeah. the area. And I will, uh, I will never say it's obvious those clouds are dropped in. Yeah, because that's that's lunacy to do that. Uh, right. But yeah, it being uh, in the water, it could be fog coming up. And like I say, I questioned it, not say that it was dropped in, but it's it's a beautiful, beautiful image. That crop right there is not bad either. Oh, what I just do with the old line there? Yeah, take the sky out. That's true. I don't think of that. That's yeah. But leave the, leave the top of the steeple in. What do you think, Gary? Just your thoughts nowadays, because we all know how you can change skies out so easily do you think that's a thought that judges have to start really looking carefully if this is a replaced sky or not it's a concern however we have to judge what's in front of us yeah, yeah. and not assume anything because everybody knows what that means when you break the word down and we never want to say anything dogmatic uh, right i've i've had images that people say well, it's obvious that this and i knew it wasn't right uh, yeah, me too. so we never want to insult the maker uh, because we've all been there and done that. But uh, th the this area right here in the clouds is what drew my attention right here and, and make, kind of made a red flag to me. Not a red flag, but maybe a caution flag to say, was it? But it's dropped in okay. I'm saying if it is, be sure and put it on multiply mode because then it's a transparent mode. But yeah, uh, it could be fog rising up into the sky. Ricky, anything else to add to that one? Yeah, you know, as it sits, I just see a beautiful, um, gosh, ethereal type of a of a of a scene, and I'm seeing that as a you know just a misty look. I I I don't think I'd want to see a whole lot more contrast to the image because for me that would uh, uh, really minimize the mood. I think the the color of the mat, the presentation is handled well. It supports the. Uh, the harmony of the color, the palette, uh, you know, and, and um, you know, we talked about that or Gary did just a, a minute ago, you know, if this was done or if that was done. And, you know, when um, when Jeff and I have the and Megan have the opportunity to have our judgings at the state, 
um, I like to visit with the judges before we get started and ask them to not assume anything. Because Gary, you're absolutely right. You know, where someone will say, well, this or that was dropped in or whatever, uh, or mm. the point I like to make is, well, someone, a judge might say, well, that moon was dropped in and it wasn't dropped in very well. And you talk to the photographer after everything's done and they say, I didn't drop the moon in. That's the way it was. And yeah. I just asked that the only thing that they assume is that the maker, as you ad address Gary so well, that we're on their side and, uh, you know, that uh, just to assume that they're right be behind you and uh, we're evaluating the these images for their benefit. But as it sits, I just, uh, man, this is just such a calming, moody uh, image, but um, uh you know, I, I went a little overboard with my comment, but I, I'm, I'm taken by it, I, is bottom line. One of the things that I think new members, uh, new entries need to know is we've walked in your shoes before. We've we've already we've already been there and we're still there. Yep. Uh, we're not perfect. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're never talking about the, the image maker because we're right there with you. you bet. We've, all, we've all had it happen. Totally yeah. agree with that. Totally agree. All right. So we have one now called Lone Survivor. Gary. Uh, yeah, I enjoy this. Uh, I think it's Lone Survivor is a good title for that. I'm not sure what kind of uh, flower or vegetation that is. Uh, I like the technique that's been put on it. Uh, I enjoy the presentation. I maybe would like to see a little bit more diagonal uh, put in there to uh, enhance the composition just a little bit. I think the color palette's good. I don't see anything really blown out. And that's another thing that we're taught to do is not say something is totally blown out or something because screens can be different, uh, even when we're judging remotely, especially. Uh, but I think it's it's got a good title. I like where the, the major point is right up here in the uh, grandma. In this area right here is not dead center. Uh, it's maybe a little soft down here, uh, but uh, that's a matter of opinion. Uh, so I, I enjoy it. Rick, we think. Yes, um, I think the, the tonal value of the image is handled extremely well. Um, I have a little concern with the stem. We have over half of the image that's taken up by the stem and, uh, you know, from this area down. And it's just so soft. And, and I can appreciate selective focus, but because we're talking so much of this real estate that's soft and out of focus, it's commanding for me more attention than I want to give, that I really want to give to the uh, I, to the flower itself. Are you suggesting maybe a, a tighter crop or a cut, crop up the bottom? Yeah, you know, if there's more on the file up on top, then maybe, yeah, coming coming and cropping up from the bottom and, uh, you know, because otherwise, you know, it's it's a it's it really is a nice study in black and white. But, uh, uh, you know, the just I'm just being so drawn to the soft focus or the out of focus, literally, of the stem that I'm not able to appreciate really how, how well handled uh, the lighting and the, and the texture was of the flower by the maker. I'm looking at the, uh, we're talking about the lip up here. It's kind of lost a little bit up in that area, maybe a little here. So that maybe could have been a maybe a little lighter tone, you think, or now nah, then it'll blend in with the flower. Yeah. So maybe do a separate key line instead of a right yeah detached uh, yeah all right very cool thank you guys let's go to mass exit wow <laughs> well you're the wow go jeff jeffy okay sure um 
first of all, it's just it's an interesting when you start looking at. It, I mean, we're not used to seeing these kind of color birds around here, so it's it's an interesting, almost uh, um, animated kind of a feeling. Um, but uh, what a great capture of this unique mass exit. Um, and these are kind of tough because you'll get. Um, you, it's it's kind of like we were talking about the buoys before. Where do you crop it to get the most impact? I mean, you can crop in, you can crop less, crop more, whatever. Um, so, and in, in the we've got nice movement, beautiful color. I love the low light. We we're talking about light before. This is a great time of day because you got some nice saturation mm -hmm. in the uh, color of the birds, um, and even the color of the the cliff. Uh, uh, riverside here we get some nice color in there so it's not just blown out complementary colors of the blues against the oranges and reds in here um it's again one of these scenes that doesn't necessarily have a main focal point other than the birds um in there but it does kind of leave you to wander around and not the impact wears off and i do keep going back to the tree and I know, like we say, sometimes we're on these trips and that's there. What are you going to do about it? And I'm not saying cut it out, but that's what happens sometimes. Um, I'm trying to, in my mind, look at if it was a crop like this to cut above and maybe the bird stand. I don't know. What do you think, Gary? <laughs> I think you got a good idea there. And that puts the horizon, if you want to call it a horizon, uh, in the third. However, I don't know if these are water birds or what. I don't know what they are. Uh, the, probably tastes like chicken but uh, <laughs> uh I, I just you know you just don't ever know uh and that's a good thing to point out the judges don't know uh right. and you can't assume that they do this is one of those that i'm almost wondering if it'd be better flipped because it put the, the weight more on the right hand side and the birds are flying out of the image uh more than into the image uh if you know what i'm saying um uh, but I don't know if the if the water is a big part of the the right. uh, this whole story the whole story and like I say the judges don't know that that's a that's an awesome image right there but I would I definitely take out uh, that that one spot right there it bothered me quite a bit now I thought okay you don't cut a bird oh for crying out loud oh that's good that fly they can fly upside down <laughs> Cliff you ever done that uh <laughs> i can't talk about that okay <laughs> you'd have to kill me right you'd have to kill uh, you yeah but yeah that right there now see the birds are going from this diagonal up that way you see the diagonal that they're going is straight up and we read from left to right so that that i mean you're used to seeing it the other way so it may not uh float your boat as well that way but i just and i don't flip everything okay uh hardly ever do a flip but i it just it reads it reads better uh as far as the presentation don't have a bit of problem with the presentation i i think it's an art piece and uh it could go that way but try it play play with it like that and see what you think and uh if you do that then uh if you can take take this area the the light areas here uh and take them down so your eye doesn't go to it Again, turn upside down, squint, see where your eye goes. Oh, hey, go back to the full one just a minute. Is that is that a limb? That's not a bird, is it? I think that's a limb. It's part of take the limb, that, I think, take, yeah. yeah, take that out too. But well, you know what uh, I see? Just real quick, what I see. I mean, this is nice, but and, and we see the scene and everything, but this you see the birds first, I think, here. Right. Just a thought. Rick, what do you think? Well. I guess I'm on the opposite end. I good. I enjoy the tree and the limbs at the bottom left. I think compositionally they're very strong. It's an anchor point for me. Mm -hmm. uh, True, because there isn't an anchor point so much here now. Right, right. But uh, I, I, I just really enjoyed it. Uh, you know the way it is right there. Uh, for me, there's just more of a story. But, you know, folks, just like we said at the very beginning, we're not going to all agree. And uh, it's just like like partners in a business. If uh, partners agree all the time, then one of them isn't needed. So, um, you know, we're going to have these uh, differences of opinions. But uh, it, and, and Gary, you made a good point. And I, I like to mention that as well uh, at times. 
okay, we like that crop that uh, Jeff just had, or maybe we like the presentation as it is. Just play with it and do side by sides and yeah, see what good point. Mean. You know, so, and get an opinion from someone else, like Jeff mentioned earlier, how we kind of go back and forth with our images to see what, uh, uh, you know, what we're missing or what we need to include or take out or whatever. It's an awesome image. Really yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful capture. I mean, just to, to just have been there and experience this could have been, it was just mind blowing, I'm sure, to see that. Well, that's, you know, just a, a little toot out on a horn for us real quick. That's what Rick and I do all the time. If you have questions about images, let us know. We're happy to look at stuff and and give you some feedback outside of the show here. So right. please don't hesitate to ask. All right, got to keep moving along because we got a few more to go here. So let's go with midterm reflection. Gary, what do you think? I think it's a nice image. I think it's a nice capture. I think the titling's good. Uh, the midterm, she's not uh, to full term. Uh, and I think that's it's kind of an interesting shot for an expectant mother uh, to not do where she's about, I don't, I don't want to be rude, uh, so I won't say about to pop. But uh, <laughs> Yet he does <laughs> say it, though, you know. That's... But, but yeah. But uh, say it. again, we know we already talked about image presentation, uh, image presentation would enhance this. And uh, also I'm seeing light. I wish I could. Can you zoom in on her face a little bit for me? I see, I see good light there, but I see straight on light. I see um, almost a butterfly type light, which you accomplish by lowering the head, which is a glamour type light with a shadow under the nose. We don't always have to have a three to one short light for it to be good light. Uh, what I am seeing though, and I want you to zoom in so we could do this. Uh, I'm seeing some problem areas and some areas of concern here and here uh, where it's approaching burnout. So that that's a concern. And on the, the bridge of the nose, uh, those are areas of concern that you don't need to do. One thing I do enjoy a lot about this is the color palette to echo the, uh, background and the, the aspens, I'm assuming again, because we don't have those uh, with the uh, tire that she has on. So I think it's uh, uh, one that she's going to really, really, really enjoy and appreciate. Um, take down the sky, you know, a few things like that that we've already mentioned on, on other images. Uh, she's almost dead center. She might be better if you had her uh, a little bit to the right in the image uh, so that she'd be more in a third. Uh, but it's 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 a nice image. It's just it's just not uh, presented for image competition at this point. Maybe crop it like that. You think it just push her off right a little bit? Yeah, or, or a little bit more even. Ricky, what do you think? He left. Rick has left the building. No, okay. I'm, I'm here. Um, <laughs> I agree with the with the uh, presentation. I, I like the rendition of the sky. I think everything was held in uh, in key and value. Uh, the exposure to me is just really dead on. Um, I'm just wondering if a if a slim would work with this. I'm, I'm I know it's an oval. Oh, but that's not even bad. Ooh, ooh, that's cool. Snap. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, you know that, and I'm sticking to it. that that takes out a lot of the problem areas too. Hey, what do you guys think about? I know it's reflection and natural, but what do you think about the fact that we have these almost detached pieces of her? Would you? I mean, her head is there. Her whole yeah, I saw that of those too. Two yeah. floaters there. Yeah, I saw that too, and I am thinking, gosh, what are you going to do? I mean, there's ripples. There's, uh, I don't know. I guess. It, you can duplicate her body and do all the weird stuff that you need to do to put it down there. Right. But, gosh. but her head is there. If you look at the, mm -hmm. yeah. you could take this out and it'd be okay. Uh, am I seeing a haloing here and here? Are y'all seeing that? And I'm seeing some haloing around here and here. Uh, just a question. I don't, if you're having haloing that, that 
there, what's interesting is there's some judges that have their pet peeves and they're going to, first thing you're going to do is, is look for uh, a line between the, the, <laughs> the trees and the, and the, yes, and the, sky. Yeah, the trees and are, others okay. are going to look for haloing. Others are going to look for, <laughs> you know, everybody has their own little pet peeve that they look for, but I'm seeing, and it may be because of the opposites in the color palette that my eye is picking up on one and, and making a haloing. I don't see it on her. I see it in the, in the right. reflection. Huh. Well, that's you got, a, that's like a question you said, for y'all. You've got a an orange tone of her dress and, and kind of a, more of the same density in the reflection of the water behind her. But then here now we have the orange to the blue. Mm -hmm. We have that complementary color. And uh, let me just go back here and do a little zoom, which I know we don't do this. We don't do this in competition. No. We, we just judge it as is. But you better I mean, do it before you enter them. But the, yeah. yeah, you you should do it, not the judges. So I could see a little tiny bit of a halo there. I mean, it, it wasn't enough to really bother me, but there's a little bit along there, and I see a little bit here. Um, very. I mean, it's kind of going on the fence kind of thing. You, you stand a chance. I, I would say it's the kind of thing, if you see it, then a judge is going to see it more than likely. So do something about it. I bet she was very tickled with that image. Oh, no oh. kidding. One thing is funny that that I see that <clears throat> miners it is, but this little ripple here keeps pulling mm -hmm. my eye. I love the rocks. I would maybe get rid of the bright spots on the rocks, um, but this little ripple, whatever is the stick or something, I would definitely get rid of that. Otherwise, man, look at the color tones back here. Isn't that beautiful? In Jeff, one chat, thing in the chat, Trevor made a uh, Trevor Trevor made a comment that it's a mask gun rogue. <laughs> You mean like a Halloween mask, Trevin, or a... <laughs> one of the, one of the things that uh, I'd like to point out, and that is the things that we say about one image apply to all the other images, also. Uh, yeah. So if we say uh, this, it's got this, and this, and this, and this. Look for that in your images, also. Look for light direction. I see. I'm seeing uh, uh, something right here. So the more you look at, it, the more you're going to see. Uh, wrong and or that can be fixed it's not wrong it just needs to be addressed before you enter in competition yeah good point, Very uh, good it, point. Tre trevin wants to be clear that it's the halo he's talking about is a mask gone rogue yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah 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 that, that haloing uh, more that i'm seeing is just a, a aura that's around the the one in the it's almost like a glow in a, in a sense, yeah. Right, yeah. Kevin, that's a term. I that that's a good term. What the that mask on rogue? <laughs> <laughs> the ma Can I, I make like a that. team? Hey, Rick, write that down and study it out, and uh, call me later and explain it. What that means. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I've got a a, a line of T-shirts that I'm working on that I'm going to make available. And it's all based off of comments that are made by photographers at workshops and judges. And this is perfect. So Trevin, I'll make sure I give you credit for that, but that's going to be a t-shirt. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> all right. We have moment of peace. Uh, what an awesome capture. I'm just going to jump into this one. I really love the whole story here. It really is a peaceful moment with mom and child. I mean, obviously, having that opportunity to photograph something like this in the wild is pretty special for us as a photographer, as humans. Um, but look at that little face, just the little baby mm -hmm. feeling, looking safe and secure in mom's arms. Um, one thing I'll just say, it's they're because they're kind of again we're talking we're getting real picky because they're both looking well this little one's not but mom's face is kind of i would love to see maybe maybe you could easily have cropped off maybe this much of the scene um to put mom a little comfortable because this again this is part of the story but it's not necessarily helping tell more of um story i don't know kind of wondering what do you guys think I totally agree with that because one of the things I was going to say is that right there needs to go. And when you do crop it like you did, be sure and handle that light trap right down there. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's that's thing. Uh, again, uh, repertoire. Uh, 
because it's one of those if in repertoire it's not broke don't try to fix it uh like uh, crop it like was was mentioned and watch the light traps but in repertoire you can burn and dodge and you can do that using the history brush instead of burn and dodge because you get that funky colors uh, i enjoy this it reminds me of a girl i used to go with but uh, <laughs> uh it's it's been a long time oh but, boy <laughs> but, but you know the, it's one of those that you say uh, you need to fix this 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 no you don't there's there's nothing to fix on that because the model sky is there and uh it's, it's not a solid greenery behind them but i think in the repertoire category it do stronger than in illustrative yeah so gary let me let me jump in here real quick because i know the, the maker of this is a first timer for us and i think pretty pretty new to competitions talk about the repertoire category what that represents for okay uh we used to call that uh photojournalistic but then they went uh, over uh, to the international and Europe and they call it repertoire, uh, which is a fine word for, it's kind of like, you know, gicle is a real <laughs> fine word for inkjet. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's one that is uh, not overly worked and nothing is really done except burning, dodging, and cropping. And it's capturing uh, a part of life or part of an activity uh, for instance, uh, a firefighter pulling somebody out of a fire or uh, uh, somebody making a touchdown at a ball game. But this uh, that's strong right there. Much that's, more impact. Yeah. And then take that uh, light corner. trap out. The, the light trap at the bottom left would kill you. But uh, that's what repertoire is. It's photojournalistic, something that you did on location um, and not posed, really. You just capture it photojournalistically. And if, by the way, if you see me going light and dark, I'm doing that to cut the light off of me so I can see your images better. Of course, I look better in the dark anyway. But uh, I beautiful. might light, lighten the eyes up and lighten the little face up here. You could do that just a little mm -hmm. bit of dodge. <clears throat> yeah. But it's it's beautiful. If you do that, you might do a little bit of uh, uh, vignette burn, you know, like this right in here uh just so that your eye goes more to the subject right and that's that's very easy to do uh be sure and uh change your feather uh accordingly when you're you're capturing something like that to burn and dodge it yeah and the last thing you don't want the, is somebody the vignette the edge of the vignette right yeah you, you wouldn't want a vignette a whole lot but just so your eye doesn't wander off for instance in this area and more i look at the more i see that and you need to do that you, you need to sit and look at it for a long time before you, you uh enter enter a uh, little hot spot right here little bitty things like that and then uh you can take those out in repertoires but i, th I think i'd enter it in that category it's, it's a beautiful image just just like it's cropped right there i think it's strong yep yep it's very strong great story good stuff <clears throat> okay so then we have <clears throat> I just saw a comment in the chat about National Geographic or something. It popped up. Yeah, they yes. said, would it be accurate to say that most or all photography in National Geographic magazine is reportage? In a way, um, if you ever get a chance, go to the 100th or 150th anniversary of National Geographic. There's a book, and uh, it's, it's real neat. They were in black and white originally, of course. Uh, because it was National Geographic Society. You had to be a member of the society to get the National Geographic. But then they ended up with the red hat and the scarf group. And that yeah. is when they went to color in their camera bags, they'd carry red hats and scarves to put on people uh, so that it would add color to their images in National Geographic. But basically, that's a correct statement. Remember uh, about 20, maybe it was longer ago, uh, they got in trouble on the cover. They moved the pyramids. Remember that? Yeah, yeah I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not a good idea. Not a good no, idea. They're too heavy. All right, guys. <laughs> this one is called No Fear. Oh. Intense. Yes, it is. What do you think, here? Very, very nice image. I really enjoy this image. Uh, I, the only thing I see that I would do is maybe take that front leg down. Uh, by that, I mean darkening it just a little bit. Uh, 
I think that the background enhances the texture that's in the, uh, I'm saying leopard. Uh, yeah. There again, I don't know what it is exactly. I don't want to assume anything, but I love the sharpness in the ears and the softness as it goes back a little bit. More of those whiskers are just dead on. Uh, the intensity in the eyes and uh, No Fear, I think is a great title. Isn't it? Uh, again, uh, I might take little things out. Where am I? Like this right here. Okay. Yeah. That little spot of green. Uh, either take that out or take down this whole area so it doesn't draw you out. But And then take take this down uh, just a little bit darker. But boy, that, that's yeah, that's that's an awesome image right there, too. That's what I'm seeing. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to step on your No, plate. no. Uh, that's, that's awesome. And, and there again, cut it out. If there's a, if you're an area of concern, cut it out. I think too on animals, when you get tighter crop like this, it just makes it that much even more intense. Make the judges see what you want them to see, not the whole picture. You, I mean, you took the whole thing and you saw it there, but play with creative crops. I mean, uh, the second thing in your uh, uh, elements is creativity and style is the third one. And then composition, of course, is your third. And what you had right there with that crop, that tight crop, really, really enhanced the composition. I see another possibility. I like the other crop better. I do, too. I, I, I would take as much of that leg out as possible and still hold the, uh, the concept of the image. Yeah, that horizontal, that long, slim horizontal that you had, I thought was great. I think that's a little too much. I think that first yeah. crop that you had was just ideal. You're getting me excited. Uh, good. <laughs> what do you think, Rick? Anything you want to add? No, uh, what we were talking about is fine. Uh, I'd even come up a little bit more from the bottom just to where we don't encroach into the whiskers. And yeah. then, of course, under the belly toning all of this down and mm -hmm. it uh, just like the the monkey image we saw a minute ago and of course that's nothing that we would say on panel uh, but because of our format we can um nature and gosh how look at the 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 coat of this leopard blends with the background and and same with the with the monkeys i i mean in the background that they had it's just nature's way of uh helping them to survive and live but definitely in my opinion we you know we'd want to tone down um, the background in all these areas and this is another image where the face of the cat is really close to the right edge but that creates more impact for me because of uh, uh, tension that it creates in emotion well when you did that rule of thirds crop that just made it dead on right there in that third. Now I circled the green because the only thing in there is out of the color palette. Right. Yeah, true. <clears throat> little things like this, too. And I don't know if Maker, if you have a little more image at the top, but if we could just not clip that ear, this is kind of close. Minor things. Um, of course, nowadays with just general photography, you could increase, you could add some canvas and use the AI to give you a little bit more, and probably give you that ear back. Um, little things like that, not for competition. Yeah, but, you can't use AI in competition. Right. But this not is- so, Not it, supposed to, anyway. Right. The <laughs> other thing that, that I kind of saw here, I'm just gonna backtrack here for a sec, in um, the original image is, we have a one-legged animal here and it's a little, I know, I know we know how it's walking in that the, out of, <laughs> the other leg is over here. Um, the other leg goes this way, but um, it just kind of makes it a little bit awkward in this long leg. That's why I think this crop mm -hmm. we were talking about was so much more powerful because it plays down that leg and lets the face really stand out. Because again, you got some white elements in the, that are going <clears> to <throat> attract attention more so than the color of the face and the eyes. And I might even, I, I, well, I like a white mat. I might suggest something more in the tones of the fur um, just to really, I mean, those eyes will just absolutely jump off the page, <clears throat> so to speak. So one of the things that's good to do is uh, pick you a tone, you know, like uh, in here. Uh, and then 
go to your uh, your colors and then just pull it down. Go in the same color palette, just go down in color yeah. about yeah. two stops and yeah. you're still in the same color palette, but it, it right. doesn't jump out and, and scream matte as much for you. Right. Exactly. Now, I have a question for you guys. Um, this kind of image, uh, it was brought out a, a good point about National Geographic, and we've seen images that we felt maybe would be better served if they were put into reportage. And I'm all for presentation. I'm all for enhancing an image. What are your thoughts in reportage specifically in terms of uh, presentation? I guess where I'm going with this is, do we see presentation in National Geographic magazine when we no. see it? No, no you, you don't, but uh, they're not supposed to be framed either. Uh, they're... they're their presentation is the magazine. Uh, when you have a standalone image, if you pulled an image out of uh, National Geographic to put on your wall, you would put a frame of some sort around it. Okay. And and the reason I'm asking too is I I, I did, I judged the, uh, uh, the World Cup uh, earlier. I think, I, actually, I think it was the first... Uh, first one and i was surprised to see how many european and non-american images that had no presentation at all mm -hmm. and they did very very well yeah but I've again, i'm not saying i'm a proponent of presentation when it comes to competition but uh it's just a just something i want to throw out and you know get you guys opinions full bleed works if it's strong enough image right i agree uh, it just happens to be that in our competition, it's one of the 12 elements. Agreed. Fair enough. Just want to be the advocate here. No, that's, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. All right. So we have, next we have, Sultry Senior. Yeah. Okay. Gary, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure the senior is very, very happy with this image. And the sultry senior is, is a good title. I think your presentation is adequate for this thing. The thing that is um, jumps out at me is it's split light or hatchet light, which cuts the face in half, which does not always is not always bad. Uh, there's great times to use it. Uh, the trees in the background jump out at me somewhat. Like I say, I'm sure she was just tickled to death with this, and, and rightly so. I like I like the hair light that you got coming in here, and and uh, the light coming in. Kathy would tell you to take this ear down just a little bit because she doesn't like bright ears. Kathy's my wife. One of the things that I I have a little concern about. I'm seeing some problem areas right here between the highlight and the shadow. I don't know if something was taken off, but you see the the difference in the uh, uh, anomaly that's going right there, a little bit of aberration going on. Also, normally we don't have the elbow uh, coming straight at us like that. Uh, it makes this arm right here look so much bigger than the rest of her. Uh, it possibly was a short lens. I don't know. But those are the, my major concerns. That and these, all these right here, really compete for this beautiful face that she has. Rick, our portrait. Yes. God, what do you think? Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> what a lovely, lovely model subject. Uh, I think the photographer is just right on the cusp of doing something really, really nice here. Because obviously we have really nice directional light coming in from camera right. I would have preferred to see her turning her head into the light. And if her head was turned into the light, then it would uh, slenderize her face and just sculpt her face so much more, in my opinion, uh, by turning, again, her face to camera right. And then we would have more of a um, of a short light and we've got more of a broader, or, like Gary said, a, a, a split lighting. Um, another thing are these strong, strong angular lines of her arms. Um, 
you know, we want to as much as possible flatter our female subjects. So we want to have curved lines, soft um, C curves or S <clears throat> curves. And if we look, you know, if we were to turn this image upside down, I think we would see kind of a box type of a look uh, from her hand coming down, uh, mm -hmm. camera left, and then across to the bottom, and then up, and then across the shoulder. It's it's just almost square. Um, but you know, we're we're right there. I mean, we just a, a few little um, enhancements here, but mainly to me is the lighting. We've got really good lighting, but turning the face into the light, I think, would have really been helpful. And her shoulders away from the light, so that we <coughs> kind of cast a shadow across her her chest and and dress. Yeah, this is what I was looking at too. Is if her body was turned to the our camera left, mm -hmm. just a little bit more, so this shoulder was forward, and then her face was turned back this way. I think we'd have just absolutely really delicious. Probably come up with a nice. Rembrandt lighting right in there. Um, and then the eyes would have really stood out more than the, it's hard because you got a white dress. Um, <clears throat> but you said it true, the arms are very powerful and they take a, they're asking for a lot of tension because of how they're posed. If we got a, just a little bit of angles on the arms, um, I think it would have been just a little softer. And I, I, I could see pulling back a little bit and just maybe bringing her hands down under her hips, mm -hmm. turning her shoulders to camera left her face to camera right, a little bit of a sassy look and a little bit more of a, a shallow depth of field. And, you know, we got thing, something going here. So there's definitely potential in, in, the, in, in the approach to this image. As Rick knows, Kathy is a master poser. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's a better poser in, in the industry than, than my wife Kathy is. And she will be one of the first to tell you, if it's a female, if you got a joint, bend it. Absolutely. Uh, don't uh, normally you don't want to show the back of the hand or the or the palm of the hand, the graceful curve and the, when the wrist is bent and that flow that you get in that uh, uh, hand that wrist when it's bent and the flow of the fingers and the fingers like being cut off like that. So here's here's the point that I, I really want to make uh, for everybody, and that is take these twelve elements, take these twelve elements and everything that we're saying that may come across as negative that they're not they're trying to be uh, a positive uh, reinforcement and uh, creative criticism and take these 12 elements and make every image for every client try to make a, a merit quality image out of it and you'll see your bottom line go up drastically yeah absolutely and even some of the little things that one of the, my dad was very big on was hand posing like bend the yes. wrist no, not shooting into the flat part of the hand, make the hand palm down and then even bend that wrist. So she's got a little place to rest the elbow, just little, little fine tuning things like that. Just make it that much more elegant. Okay. A couple more images here before we're done with our show. So let's move along. Okay. We have trolling. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what are great... you doing? They're looking for food. So, what a great title! No kidding. Beautiful animal. I love the color palette. I like the presentation. I like the amount of artwork uh, that you put on the the bird and it uh, enhanced in the background. Love the image presentation. The one thing that I might have done a little differently: the horizon here is almost dead center. If you take a little bit off the bottom not 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 that much i'm i can't draw a straight line but if you took a little bit off the bottom then you would have the the uh, animal the duck more in the uh lower third instead of more toward the center but man that is an awesome image i'd put that if i were scoring that i'd put in the awesome category <laughs> yeah i i would be an awesome plus yeah i'm awesome plus for sure yeah that's I, actually that's about the only thing I would add, Gary. What you said is just this this little bit of uh, cropping up the bottom a little bit. I think this little dark area tends to pull my attention, so I would definitely bring this crop right across here and bring that bird down. Awesome, awesome capture, awesome, it's beautiful, cool. absolutely. And and the, and the presentation I think is nailed dead on. The stroke lines are to me 
perfect. Um, everything's great, except I, I would I think compositionally it would enhance it just a little bit to do that, and that'd be so easy to do. Yeah, very good, guys. And then we have two for one. <laughs> Gary, what do you think? I think it's a good presentation. I'm not sure what that is in the mouth there. Is that is that a bug or a, it, it really don't matter. I think the titling's good. Uh, it's a raven or a crow. I think it depends on really which area of the country you're in yeah. uh, sitting on a fence post. Uh, it doesn't have us, and you we don't do this when we're judging. It's hard to bring up this right after the other one that we just saw. Right. because it's not as impactive but yet it's got a great uh impact if it didn't have the thing in the mouth you might say quote the raven nevermore or something like that but uh it's it's a beautiful image i, I applaud the maker for the the uh, tonal harmony all the way through i think the edges of the uh the image going into the presentation are handled nicely i think you've got d good detail and all the feathers and to handle that exposure like that i think is very much to be applauded you might actually put a slight grayish not bright white catch light in the eye i know there is a kind of a catch light in there that's a big broad catch light but yet just a small little little catch light in that eye, i think would enhance it just a little bit i, I like the diagonal like the composition like a lot of things about this me too me too uh jeffy can you Flip that horizontally. Sure. Either that or upside down. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's the default. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you want me to go uh, point in the other direction? Is that what you're saying? Or you want it upside down? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the other direction, please. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. That Well, that is another direction. <laughs> I'm telling you. So oh, yeah, stronger. I and do the reason so I'm too. I'm saying that again, this left to right thing, uh -huh. where whatever is going into the bird's mouth is coming in from the left into the mouth. The other direction, I felt like it was going out of the mouth. That's a lot stronger. That's a North American point of view. Yeah, I think that is too. And it, it looks like caramel corn. Somebody's tossed it. Cracker Jack or something, but um, yeah, it's just a wonderful detail through. I mean, even look down underneath here, this back leg, there's detail, you mm -hmm. can see the body, you can see the leg, you can see underneath here. So that, I mean, the technic, technical excellence here is outstanding. Um, I, I don't know what more you could do. I mean, you could arguably say, let's do the uh, mat in a gray to go with the bird, but you got the background. No. This I, I think would be uh, an incredible uh, black and white too. Yeah. Um, I think the nat mats nailed dead on. I mean, I, I, I agree. your color harmony, color balance, color palette. I think it's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, nice. I don't know. And and adding that, just just highlighting that top of the eye there a little bit, like you said, would give it just a little more pull into the eye. That's about all mm -hmm. I can really suggest to add to this. And I think it's in the G Wiz category. Thing. One little thing, guys. How about this band? in the background are yay, you saying you're yay, saying banding yay. no no I, i'm sorry just i don't the mean dark, banding. Just the tone. i mean i mean this uh tan oh uh, horizontal tan y yay nay that, that didn't bother me it, ha it hasn't it hasn't bothered me till you said it and i'm looking at it and i nah it's okay all right because i mean if you're going to go that route then you get this corner upper left and bottom left well and those those issues those uh elements frame it for me yeah, uh -huh. no, I think it's I think it's okay. Right. I think it gives it a little depth, is what I'm yeah. feeling in it. Okay, it's, I, uh, it makes it not on just a plain background. I accept your thoughts, no matter how wrong they are. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's that why coming. I love you so much, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey gang, that was the last of our images here. So very cool. Um, very much appreciated. Hopefully. You, all of you makers, um, let me get out of uh, sharing so you can come back to reality here. So 
everybody who submitted, we thank you very much for partaking in the show. And I'm, I'm sure, I mean, I can tell you just from sitting here, um, it was uh, just an awesome presentation, awesome comments by my fellow jurors here, if you will. Um, Gary, thank you so much for being part of the show. And, and you, I got those. Can I hit your light, Gary? Connection. It was his, uh, we his wife who was her. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I just want to ask Gary to turn on his. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. I just wanted to point out real quick. I don't know if you guys realize this, but his wife, Kathy, was our judge, one of our judges back in October for our. So we've had some wonderful input from both sides of the family, and they were both right. How's that? <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to comment on that one. Uh, <laughs> but, but I do have a, a, a couple things to say, especially the members. Um, my daughter is a CPA, and she has on her wall the definition of lunacy. And that is uh, you keep on doing the same things you've been doing, expecting different results. That's the definition of lunacy. Yep. So if you if you learn anything tonight, um, change what you're doing if if it's if it's going to enhance you in anything, and don't ever feel intimidated. Uh, Rick, you were talking about early judging. My first one of my first judging was in Louisiana, and on one side, and these guys will know these names. Uh, most of y'all will not. One side was Tom McDonald, and the other side of me was Frank Caricchio. Wow. <laughs> and, and I'm sitting there as a new guy straight out of the box, so intimidated. And, you know, they both basically put their arm around me and said, Hey, you know, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. Um, but the thing I'd, I'd like to leave with is a quote that says, it's not how many times that you get knocked down. That's counts. It's how many times you get back up. The only thing is <laughs> The person that said that was George Armstrong Custer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so boy. it worked real good to that one last time. But as, take take these 12 elements, take everything that you've heard tonight and, and send a thank you note to these guys that are producing this because they're doing, you know, they're doing a great service to you and uh, uh, take everything that you're doing take it apply it to your business apply it to your work make every work every piece of work that comes out of your camera a merit image and you'll see your bottom line increase drastically boy isn't that true that was the one thing my my dad of course you guys all know rick dad and my dad were also very involved in the industry and that was the one thing that dad kept saying i said we're going to do this competition thing because it's going to teach you how to be a better photographer not exactly. just get trophies and higher scores it just takes your work to that next oh god i hate that term next level it just makes you that much better and it's been so true i mean we've been practicing this now for how many years and um i think i can say both rick and i have a lot of again awards and accolades are great to measure it but just the feel of of having good work and being able to turn around and and share um with you guys is exciting for us so thanks for Staying with us and checking in and all the fun things we got planned for this show in the future. We got shirts. You see the shirts? We got new shirts. So we'll be putting those out real soon. Yeah, see, there's Cliff. He's got one. Rick's got his on. I love it. We'll be putting shirts out real soon. So um, any questions from the peanut gallery, please let us holler at us right now. Would you just turn your mic on and holler at us? Or not? <laughs> no. Nothing, Cliffy. No, I have I have nothing to add. Cool. Well, then, Gary, but, thank but, you so much. But everything to give, Cliffy. You're always there for us, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jeff, I don't normally do this, but if anybody uh, wants to know more about the uh, the history brush I've been talking about, uh, my email, which I don't normally give out, is uh, Meek Photo, M E E K, like my last name at sbcglobal.net not com but dot net so sbcglobal.net make photo and uh just say uh send me a white paper on the history brush and i'll be happy to do that and if you're burning and dodging using the burning and dodge tool uh you'll see a great great difference in in this and we've talked about that a whole lot tonight about what the burning and dodging can do so gary, i'll be happy happy to help anytime tell me again gary what is gary. It real quick it's meek photo at sbc global yes okay i'm putting it in the chat box everybody 
Okay. Dot net. Yeah, yeah dot net. that's it. Gary, Gary, is that where uh, where everyone can go to learn of uh, yours and Kathy's uh, uh, seminars or any teachings or any? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. If anybody uh, wants us to speak or teach, we're very happy to do that. Uh, I I remember one of my first meetings I went to. Don Blair, y'all knew him. He was an icon in the industry. Had. Uh, these bars on his ribbon that he had around his neck. I didn't know what the ribbon is for. And I thought it was a Spidell watch band or something. And <laughs> I've, I've been very blessed to, and, uh, to achieve a goal that I tried to, to get. And Kathy's not too far from that, uh, herself as though, um, well, it's, we're not tooting our own horn, but we're, we're happy to help anytime, anywhere we can. And, uh, we do, do give a, an image competition program. Uh, y'all probably do the same thing, but, if you know anybody that needs that, just let us know. We'll be happy to help any way we can. Well, we'd Great. love to have you back in Colorado soon. I'd yeah. love to do that. Yeah. That white stuff, is it still out there? <laughs> the white stuff, yeah. The yeah, the powder. The, but the good thing here is that I mean it can come down. We can get 10 inches. So I had 10 inches up here. I'm north of Denver last week and it's gone. So mm -hmm. it doesn't last too much, you know. So it's beautiful and then it goes away. That's the best part. And and yep. to the whole point. Uh, to Gary and Kathy and to all of our our participants here, isn't it great that now we're getting back together in person? We just had uh, um, uh, you know our judging, and we had a uh, Kathy, of course, participated in. People were together; they were in uh, um, viewing. Uh, what are they calling it, Jeffy? Uh, at Jessica and, and Shannon's. Um, when the when the judging goes on, oh, and, I mean the the club seventy nine thing. Well, yeah, yeah. Watch but party. That was, watch uh, party. I'm sorry, Michael. Like a watch party, like we, watch, we party. watch party. That, that's right. the word. So we're getting back together, and and it's just so good to see. And I'm I'm really appreciative of that, and especially appreciative, uh, Gary, of uh, you taking your time out uh, tonight and sharing uh, such valuable valuable input as Kathy did and in our judging is is she near by the way uh why are you there we'd sure like to hey, say kathy? hey kathy i think she's in there putting her makeup on <laughs> <laughs> well uh, if she's beautiful any of our, our um, participants if you ever have an opportunity to meet gary and kathy just the most wonderful people in the world just uh generous in their sharing and uh, kindness and uh uh you know as our all of you and that's what makes this fraternity so, so yeah one absolutely hey real quick let me say before kathy comes in the scene here we have our our pp colorado president online and michael rhinos with us hi michael thanks for tuning in and supporting you guys as a group support what we're doing and we really appreciate that so thank you for that sir yeah yeah uh, thank you jeff and rick and uh all of the guests that you have uh throughout the programs and so forth and that because Again, we look at this as being a, a real good program for our members, the members of uh, the guild, others that are even outside of the group and so forth and that. This is, you know, with, with some of the changes that happened with uh, PPA and, you know, the, the the IPC and so forth and that, we, we see this as still being a real valuable service in that, that, um, that you guys make available for members and, and others in that. So really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Michael. And, you know, I'd like to also reach out to our participants here tonight and many of you have already but uh, if you're so inclined please uh, post some comments on our site that uh, we would really appreciate and uh, uh, those are the kind of things that we can use to market uh, this sure. this uh, process in this this show uh, but uh, before we get too far away too I, I again I really want to thank Cliffy while we've got everyone yes. still on for, Absolutely, uh, are doing such a wonderful job. You make things so easy for us. You know, before we leave, Gary will understand this kind of humor. When I was in the Army, Fort Benning, I was in the Infantry Officer Basic Course, and one of the guys there was from Arkansas. One of my friends says, well, how far is it from here to, wherever it was, how far is it from here to your home? And he paused for a minute, and he thought, he said, about two six-packs. <laughs> 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 uh, that's about right 
<laughs> yeah, I, th- th- there's a hand raised up there. I don't know. Uh, it's it says Michelle Fox, but John. Oh, uh, John, do you have a comment, John? Yeah. Are we done with technical discussions? <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. I think after the beer joke, yeah. We're, we're into the <laughs> we're into no, the gutter ahead. now. Go ahead. Doug. <laughs> into the joke time. Um, so for for a photograph in which there's a lot of texture in the whole photograph, like take for instance the the first one that we looked at. Um, and I know there was a comment made that maybe the background should be brought down a little bit. Would you uh, consider maybe um, taking the clarity into negative territory or texture into negative territory to kind of reduce some of the maybe the visual chaos there and and uh, take some of the texture away from from a, a surrounding area? You could a little bit. I think you just had to be a little careful with it, but it's going to kind of give you a vignette feel. Um, so you just have to be kind of be careful as if I'm reading you right, where you start on that, if you start in the same focal plane as the bear on the sides and go back, I know that's kind of a technique we'll see on TikTok and Facebook, but technically you're going to want to make sure wherever your bear is sharp, you want to keep that the, four, mm-hmm. the uh, flowers on the side the same sharpness, but behind the bear, yeah, definitely. You could certainly soften that a little bit. Just it's got to be really subtle, otherwise you'll have an obvious line. So a, mm-hmm. a gradation between your sharpness and your softness uh, wouldn't be a bad idea um, on something like that. Yeah, if that's <laughs> what you were talking about. Yeah, you, you can actually do the lasso tool and then adjust your feather. Yeah, uh, so that you can uh, do the softness. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, one other thing, real quick, I want to point out: we got our good buddy Kevin Holiday with us tonight. He's going to be a judge for us or a guest. I would like to say come up coming up here next year we haven't picked a month yet but kevin's yes. going to be and then for those of you who know kevin we're going to have a total different now he knows the ppa world because he's very much participated but he's definitely in in the other world of as i call <laughs> real photography <laughs> we've talked about that so kevin thanks for joining in with us tonight and we yeah, look forward to your feedback because this is going to be i i will i will gladly say it's going to be quite different than what we've had with some of our other jurors in the past just for something different so watch for that show coming up here early next year looking forward to it nervous at the same time nah it's, <laughs> just bring some bad jokes and you know you'll be good yeah yeah I'll we'll, we'll, we'll just put a cloth over the table so your knees so we won't see your knees <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, you, yeah, yeah. If, if you need any bad if you need any bad jokes just let me know i'll send you some yeah <laughs> yeah i'll be and, i'll and, be emailing and, you Gary. just get your bicycle that. ready Kevin, the other yeah. thing is if if you're not doing a good job, all of a sudden you'll you'll keep disconnecting from the show. It's just oh, okay. If, that's if, good if to know. that happens, you'll know it's a sign. Yeah, that's good to know in advance. Appreciate yep. that. Thank you for watching the Image Critique Show with Jeff Johnson and Rick Avalos. Learn more by checking them out at theimagecriticshow.com.